Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host, Joel Uhali Baird. Oh, let's go to the IV Organic 3-in-1 Plant Garden Hotline and bring on our guest for the week. Wendy Kingsbury is a passionate gardener, garden speaker, and writer whose articles and contributions have appeared in a number of national publications and books. She is also the author of The Chinese Kitchen Garden. Welcome to the program, Wendy. Hi, thank you guys for having me. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on the program and enlighten us about some things that we may not be privy to. Thanks. Okay, so um, why don't you tell us more about your book, The Chinese Kitchen Garden. It's definitely a very interesting book. What does the content consist of, and is there something in there you want to share specifically with us and our listeners? Yeah, sure. Um, The Chinese Kitchen Garden is a book that shows gardeners of all experience levels how to grow and then use Chinese vegetables. Um, It's organized by season, and it also hits on all the big topics like watering, mulching, pest control, um, and I worked pretty hard to make it a good general gardening book as well. So great for beginners. Um, I wanted it to be really useful for people who are new or even new-ish to Asian vegetables. I find a lot of gardeners have tried like your bok choy, maybe your gai lan, you know, maybe your edamame. Um, so I, I also put like 20 or so recipes in there so people know how to use those vegetables. Um, a lot of them are my mom's recipes and they're great, but I also believe that Chinese vegetables are not just for Chinese food. So um, in the book I gave a lot of suggestions about how you could use the vegetables in your own dishes as well. Um, it's been interesting because I've had a lot of non-gardeners actually buy the book and say they use it as kind of like a handbook as they're shopping at their Asian supermarkets. Um, it it kind of helps them figure out what all the vegetables are, kind of demystifies it a little bit and how to prepare them. Because um, I, I know it can definitely be confusing. If, you, if you're new, you might not even know what part of the vegetable to use or wh- whether you peel it or not peel it, cook it or not cook it, and that kind of thing. Well, and and what was the inspiration for this book? You mentioned your mother. Uh, was that the was that the key um, to writing the book? Oh well, it's always been kind of um, a goal to document all my mom's recipes because you know she, she's an amazing home cook. But um, but really, I I, it, I started I I wrote the I got the idea to wrote, write the book because um, when I started gardening. Gardening is like super hot right now, I think, in my opinion. But when I started gardening, the, I, I knew no one who gardened. I mean, nobody. Um, neighbors, nothing except for my dad. Um, so one summer I decided to start a blog. Um, the blog was absolutely perfect because I love um, photography and I'm also a foodie. And it kind of gave me a platform to you know, share my pictures of my garden that nobody would ever care about in my real life. Um, so, you know, the blogging community is amazing, and I met friends all over the world, and um, especially my, my posts about Asian vegetables um, got a, a lot of attention, and, and eventually someone was like, you should write a book, and I was like, I should write a book. I, I, I felt like I had all this information that people should know, um, and yeah, so it just kind of went from there. Well, that's, that's really great. Now, you found gardening as a way to help you connect with your father. How did that occur, and why are you glad that it did? Yeah, <clears throat> my dad My dad is a little bit difficult. He's, he's, a, he's a really good-hearted man, a really humble and hardworking man, but he's also quiet and kind of stern-ish, and he grew up during the onset of communist China. Um, you know, his childhood was really difficult, and... I I had, growing up here, I really had no idea about the landscape of China, his life, or other circumstances, um, except for little stories I heard here and there from from other adults. And, you know, there were were stories that my sister and I wanted to know more about, but they were too painful for him to tell us, um, especially the ones about my grandmother, who died before we were born. Um, and, and of course, we were always told, don't ask him about her, because he's, it's just, it would just be too hard for him to tell. So, so fast forward to a day, one summer, I think we were doing bamboo. There was, we had like a wheelbarrow full of bamboo. Um, 
that we were, you know, cutting in half and trying to, to um, dig the hearts out of. It was like going to be a two-hour task. And it was quiet, so I, I asked a question like, oh, so what vegetables did you grow in China? Just a pastime, um, and was surprised to hear him go into a reverie about it, and, and not, not just the vegetable, but little bits and pieces of his life, too. Um, and, and eventually, I think talking about the vegetables gave him like a, a safe vehicle to be able to, to talk a little bit about it. And you know, here and there, he would mention things about my grandmother, too. You know, I remember the first time he said anything about his his mom. I was like, it's so excited, but I had to play it cool. Um, and you know, there were days when I'd kind of push a little too far, and he would shut it down. But I think talking about the vegetables allowed him to share those stories, um, and it really helped me get a sense of what his life was like. Um, so, if your listeners buy the book and they check out the dedication. It will definitely make more sense. The dedication of the book was my absolute favorite part of the whole book, um, and you know, I did incorporate a lot of these little stories that I learned um, throughout the book um, in the introduction and even the introduction sections to some of the vegetables and chapters. Um, they're definitely my favorite parts of the book and the most meaningful and fun to write too. Whenever you were talking to your father about the vegetables, and he, then he opened up about your grandmother, was there was there a, a gleam of smile to his face that you un, opened up a, an avenue that of memories that excited him, that brought happiness or, or remembrance back in, in his world? Um, you know, that's an interesting question. I would say no, because he's. I think, you know, because the, the childhood was so rough and it was just kind of traumatic and, you know, he comes to America and it's sort of a rags to riches story um, and my family's, you know, it's, it, it is a rags to riches story, I'll just say that. We do, my family does very well. Um, so a lot of times talking about the vegetables is like, why do you want to know that? That's stupid. Or why do you want to know about... Yeah, I remember one day he he was talking about going to the um, essentially a farmer's market to sell things and I was like I just wanted to have like a full picture so I was like oh what did you bring your lunch in and you know he said a little and I was like what did you wrap the food in and he was like that's stupid why do you want to know that you know so he's sort of like a very closed man um, I, I like to think that maybe he finds it touching or something that I'd want to know this stuff, but yeah, he just has a very different perspective. Interesting. Definitely. So, uh, thank you for sharing that. What are some Chinese Asian vegetables that can be grown in almost anyone's kitchen, backyard, garden? I know many of us are familiar with like bok choy and pak choy, but um, I know throughout your book you have a number of different ones. Um, there's even a a root crop, I can't remember what it daikon? is. Daikon? No, it wasn't daikon, it was something else. But what are ones that like people can grow and maybe don't realize are they are fun to grow and, and introduce themselves to something new? Yeah, um, well, some of the some of the root crops, like taro root, for example, would be pretty difficult to grow. I don't I don't think we'd be very successful in my zone here in Maryland. Um, but I did include them because they're interesting and. Um, some people in more tropical zones can grow them, and um, we we see those things on menus and other and like Asian supermarkets. So I just wanted, you know, people to have that awareness. Um, but there are plenty that we can grow. Um, actually, I'm looking outside at my garden, and I have edamame popping up. I like to grow edamame. You know, edamame are the the, the big soybeans you steam and just pop in your mouth. I like to just put those wherever I have spare space in the garden. I just plop in a seed, and those are very easy. Um, long beans, I think, are really interesting. They are, you know, they do need something to climb, and they do. They produce these beans that kind of dangle down in pairs, and they can be like ten. I would harvest them at no more than ten inches, but they can grow even longer and. They're just super cool and fun, especially um, you know if you have kids or grandkids. I, I think it's, it's they look really cool and they're kind of fun to harvest. Um, Luffa gourds, I think, are very interesting. Um, 
You can use them like you use summer squash. Um, it's not too, probably not too late to start now. Those also are, are big, prolific plants, so that also, those they also need something to grow. So, you, you know, you would just harvest them young, like young and small, um, and you could just use them however you would use a summer squash. They're kind of soft on the inside. Um, and then anything you miss, of course, will actually turn into scrubby bath sponges. So that's always a super cool one and pretty easy to grow. Um, I would say there are also some vegetables that are just generally kind of superior and sorry to say that to their western counterparts but they really kind of are superior and i would say you know chinese cucumbers for example use them however you use your own cucumbers but they um, are longer slimmer have fewer seeds people say they're sweeter for me i think they're great pickling cucumbers um eggplants or asian eggplants are great i think they're beautiful they can just be steamed upright. They tend to be um, tend to also have fewer seeds, be less bitter, um, and you know, and, and you can find those seeds pretty easily online. Um, and then, of course, if you're my, my daughter is um, to just turned 21 and she just moved into a house with a little um, garden plot, so she's like asking me a gazillion questions. Um, she's probably just getting her garden ready. I, I think it's probably too late to do anything for summer. So she can probably do Asian greens. So if you're just kind of getting started this season, um, Asian greens love the cool weather. So, of course, the ones that you mentioned, Holly, but also Tatsoi is a favorite. Um, that's like a, a rosette bok choy. Um, gai lan, which is Chinese broccoli. It's, it looks kind of like broccoli rob. That's probably one of our family favorites. Um, and those love the love cool weather, so those would be great to do later. A uh, good selection of vegetables in which to grow in your backyard. Uh, Wendy, tell us a little more where we can find your book and find out more about you. Um, yeah, the book should be you know anywhere you're anywhere you buy books. Um, you can find it on Amazon. Request it from your independent bookstore. Um, I, I have a, if you're, if anyone needs information, wants to reach out, please feel free. If you, if you Google me or my book, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to find info, but I do have a website, Um If anyone's on Facebook, I have a Chinese Kitchen Garden Facebook group, and that's a, a great place where we can interact. Um, so feel free to, to join that and check that out too. Well, Wendy, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us on the program and enlighten Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You guys are great. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.